You might be wondering how I ended up with so many fishing lines attached to my trident. Well, let's go back a few days and find out what happened. Some days earlier. Hello humans, how are you all doing? Hopefully doing great, I'm personally doing well, it's a lovely day. I'm here at spawn because I had a really cool idea for a farm I want to make, and we are going to the creative dimension to find out if it can be done, or if I'm just silly. At some point during the first episodes, I was fishing so much, that I had to start using the composter to convert some of the fish into bone meal. I believe aquaculture is adding said recipe, but I'm not too sure. Regardless, I thought it would be a funny idea to make a fishing farm and see if I can make a decent amount of bone meal with it. Fishing does give a decent amount of varied drops, so I hope that something interesting comes out of it. Alright, I think this spot is far enough from the rest, I don't want to bother people. I have a decent understanding of what I need exactly to make a fishing rod, work with a deployer. The real difficulty will be on how to collect the experience orbs, repair the tools, and all of that jazz. My initial idea is to have the fishing rod horizontally, because I think it will be easier for the redstone. The fence will hold the water and the pressure plate, so let's start with the water. Don't mind this pressure plate, it's here to hold the water, and to make sure the fence doesn't connect. What we do need is another pressure plate on top. And any block to prevent the rod from casting further away. The last piece will be a repeater to send the signal to the deployer. So far so good. Now, if we give it a fishing rod, it should try to cast it right away. And it stops, that's perfect. It should remain this way until it fishes something. While we wait, I'm going to change that pressure plate with a slab. It should look a bit better. I like it. I should add an item collecting system too. This is the easiest part, it should only need a random storage of any kind, and a hopper to collect the items. Barrel on the side. And the hopper under the fence, towards the barrel. Just need to wait for a fish to appear. Any second now. Any second. There we go, and there is no fish. Wait, why is there no fish? Where did the fish go? Look, it happened again. Where are the fish going? A few attempts later. I have no clue what's going on, it reels the fish, but then nothing happens. Fish are simply vanishing. Editor Batsy here. So the issue is that the deployer is running way too slowly, so it doesn't have the time to catch the fish when they bite, that took me way too long to realize, and I only thought about it now as I was editing the clip. If you making a similar farm yourself, do make sure that the speed is good enough, but don't make it too fast either, otherwise, it's going to be quicker than the repeater. Have fun watching me be silly for a good hour. I tell you what I'm thinking, what if, because we are in the creative dimension, fish just don't work in here. Yeah, I think that might actually be it. Alright, I'm going to create a new testing world on super flat. Just to make sure that the problem isn't the data pack that adds the creative dimension. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I just like to add andesite casings as the surface of the world, and also a bit more thickness, so the bedrock layer is a bit more far away. I also like to make sure to disable structures and the slimes. They just get a bit obnoxious otherwise. And now we wait. What? There is no fish, again? Maybe it's because I disabled the mob spawns. Let's set it to true, just in case. Nothing, still no fish. Does fishing simply not work in creative, or what's the deal here? I tell you what, I have a backup of the world in my computer, let's just try in there instead. Surely it's going to work now, surely.
Are you going to catch a fish now? That's a no. I'm getting so confused. Fish are just not appearing at all. Perhaps it's the biome, maybe it needs to be the ocean or a riven for it to work. Surely now it works. Never mind, still nothing happened. Yeah, I have no idea why this doesn't work. Starting to think that fishing on a deployer doesn't work to begin with. Many attempts later. Wait, this one gave me experience. Yes, it's finally working. I built it in my platform at the ocean, and somehow, that made it work. I have zero idea what's going on, my computer might be haunted or something. It's catching fish just fine now, this is so bizarre. Well anyway, it works, cool beans, time to be more productive. The items are being collected, but what about the experience, we kinda need it to repair the rod automatically. My first thought is to use a pump to collect the orbs as if it was water or something. Interesting, there are some pumps from sophisticated storage. I'm not entirely sure how those work, so let's skip that for now. Experience can be stored on a tank, so I don't see why this shouldn't work. Hey, it works. Does it actually though? It's not going in the tank. Hmm. It's just sitting there. Well that's a bummer. The disenchanter can surely store the experience orbs. Or maybe not. I wonder why is it sucking it upwards, but then it's not going inside. A pipe instead of the pump directly, surely this one does it. That's a no, the orb is right there. I know for a fact that the disenchanter can collect orbs from the top part, I did that before. They just need to reach the top of it. That should collect the experience, now we wait and see where the orbs go. They going everywhere. Let's add another one on top, just in case. Hopefully this covers most of the directions. Oh no. It's stuck again. What if? I add a slab in here. It should block the fishing rod, but still have room for the orb to move. This is getting a bit too slow, I'm going to add some extra deployers so it doesn't take me all day. The orbs are just bouncing everywhere, this is going to be more complicated than I thought it would be. I had an idea, maybe I can blow the experience orbs away. Collecting them at the side of it should be easier. Wait, this is not going to work. All of the fishing lines will get blown away too. Let's try the side with the repeaters, at least to test this theory. It will probably need a little bit of speed. And of course, the orbs to be in the way. Yes, come towards me. Nice, that worked. Good gods, there are experience orbs everywhere. Okay, I walled it off a little bit more. I just need them to land on the repeaters. But it's no use, they are bouncing all over the place. What if I block the ceiling too, see if that improves it a bit. And maybe the corner too, so they don't glitch between blocks. Surely now it's better, surely. What in the world, how did you do that? This is bonkers, it's glitching through the glass. So this should work the same way right? I just need those orbs to glitch through it again. There is no experience coming in here. See, they are stuck underneath again. That's a bummer, I'm guessing that it works with glass because it's not a full block, maybe. Wait, not a full block, huh, maybe that's the key. If I cover it with slabs. Then I can blow it away with fans. Holy cow, that works. Never mind, it doesn't. I'm trying to surround it as best as I can, but they still not jumping upwards. Every now and then, there seems to be an orb that manages to go through it. I wonder if it's the fishing rods, pushing the orb. But it's not consistent enough. Trapdoors are much thinner, surely that will help with it. I was looking for a moment without anything, 
but they seem to get stuck in that corner at the end. Yeah, this is hopeless, let's try the trap doors. Oh jeez, oh dear. Okay, no trap doors. Wait, yes, copycats. What about now? So far so good, I think. Going to add another layer of glass on top to make sure they don't fly away. I think this is working. Sometimes they take a bit to glitch through the copycat, but they eventually get there. The experience is going up. Maybe not particularly fast, but up nonetheless. I quite like this design, taking a glitch and making it a feature, that's brilliant. Now I just need to find out how to repair the fishing rods. My hope is that there is a tag for a damaged tool or something like that. But I don't seem to see anything along those lines. Which makes sense because the rod isn't damaged yet. This should be enough for now. How do I repair this? Maybe I just dump experience orbs on it. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's going to need mending for that. Now yes. Wait, it has no power, silly me. That seems to be doing something. Is that doing something? I mean, it's spitting a ton of orbs everywhere, that's for sure. But it did nothing though. Let me think, how does one repair a tool with create I wonder? The pondering system doesn't seem to be particularly helpful in this case. Maybe it's a deployer that repairs it, that would make sense, right? Right? Hello? Wait, yes, now it's working. It did nothing to it. All right, it's not a deployer either. At least the collection system is working perfectly now. I'm sure that a quick Google search will give me the answer, but it can't be that complicated. There has to be something in here that is helpful. Experience related, that sounds good. Spout. Spout. Of course. Spouts work with fluids, and experience is a fluid, how didn't I thought of that from the beginning? Yes, look at it go. I just lowered the durability to nearly broken, let's see how much experience does it take to repair this. Exactly half a bucket. Alright, not sure what that means in terms of levels, but sounds good. I added a bunch of funnels underneath as placeholders for the chute later on. They should bring the rods to this corner, so I probably want a depot in here. And maybe the spout on top. Yeah, that looks fine. Then a funnel to extract the repaired item. And that should move it along the depots, awesome. Thinking on adding another belt underneath, just in case it overshoots the funnel on the first try. That surely won't do it. Maybe I do the same way. That looks fine. Is it moving the right direction? Let's find out. Nice, it is. And it works perfectly. Now for this side, a chute to go down. If for whatever reason the rod doesn't go into the depot the first time, this should make sure it keeps trying. I like this design, I think it should work underwater without much problem. I'm going through the random drops from fishing, I think I'm going to need a setup to process all of this. Some of them give decent loot once recycled. Yeah see, this one even gives planks, that's pretty cool. There are also the little boxes from aquaculture. It gave me an emerald, that's not bad. Another one. Iron ingot. Oh, gold ingot, this is pretty nice. Holy cow, I got a diamond, wait that's so cool. There is the tin can, which gives some iron too. Let's try the other one. A bunch of random items. It gives iron when recycled though, that's pretty good. What about the worst one? Okay, 
This one literally pukes all kinds of items on you. I think I will have to find a way to filter out certain items, and maybe have a few processing machines to deal with some of those drops. I have done some progress, and I think I like it. I added a bunch of composters to process all of the fish that comes from it, plus a barrel for everything else. The EXP collection system seems to be stable now, it hasn't glitched out any orbs. Now I just need to replicate this in the server, I might even scale it up so the rates are better. Let's go back to the server, and get to work. Oh right, I was in the creative dimension. What in the world are you doing here? Did someone left it here for me? I was taking a look at the caves and all, but I don't see how that might have spawned, and floated to the surface. Well anyway, there is fishing to be done. And for that, I'm going to need a lot of rods. That's 26 rods, should probably do it for now. But all of them need mending, so I need to go visit XT to get them all enchanted. Alright, I made it to their base. Hello. Oh, there is nothing here. This is quite spacious though, I wonder what builds are they going to place in here. Looks like it's mostly placeholders for now. I do like the cliff though, that one looks neat. I'm usually not a big fan of too many framed blocks, but this looks really nice, I like it. Oh, the cave is so cool. I see, it's a train station. The entrance is really nice though, it looks like a mine of sorts. But that's where we going today, the black and purple base. Oh, I like this, that's a good idea. I see redstone. It seems to be to block the water, that's kinda neat. So I guess it's a way to disable those water wheels. Very nice, a really cool build so far. And where would you go? Oh, it goes down, there is an entire base in here. Alright, let's not be too nosy about it. I thought this was a bridge of sorts, but there is an entire workstation in here, that's really cool. Enchantment factory from XT, this is it. Oh, there we go, that's what I was looking for. Seems like all of the enchants are already set up and ready to go. I thought this was using hyper experience for a second, but seems to be a pretty normal setup. Complimentary nachos, oh sweet, getting me hungry. Wait, holy cow. Look at that. That looks so amazing, looks like a turbine or something, does it not? Oh, it's still a work in progress from the outside. I love how this looks to be honest, this is so cool. I wonder if this is something that would happen in real life. Like, if this is based on an actual turbine or something along those lines that is actually used for something. I like the building, it kinda feels like pathways but then it's the actual build, it's a cool touch. XT is online so they should be somewhere in here, hopefully. That's an AFK human if I ever seen one. NTFS, future sight. I have no idea what that means. NTFS, relocate this silly mess. Another NTFS there. Oh, it means note to future self, well that makes more sense. Anyway, we are here for business. Yes, looks good. Here you go XT, I want only the bestest in chance. In the meantime, I'm going to eat some of these nachos, and I guess sit there with my torso split with the bench. I need to do some editing, and some stuff at home so I will be afk here for a bit. I came back, and I got myself a bag full of enchanted rods. So you know what that means, it's time to swim back home, and get started on the actual farm. Before getting into that, I have added a couple of details to this side of the wall. I was watching B-dubs explaining that in order to transition things better, you can try adding details at the front, so the transition at the back is smoother. So I thought I would give that a try, and went for some roots and dead corals. Obviously, I still need to improve the gradient of the stains and all of that, but let me know what you think of this idea, I think I kind of like it to be honest. 
But now yes, it's time to get building. Those should be the final touches. Alright, I think I'm done here. The experience orbs are being pushed nicely to the side. The tank is being filled up as we speak. This is a success. The loot is very non-impressive so far, but it will slowly get there, this is a very passive farm after all. I should also start to think about filtering a few things that need to be processed. Oh, I forgot to add the hoppers underneath, well that's no good. I was tweaking up the filters a little bit, and I guess I should address the elephant in the room. I seem to have broken the game a bit, I have a ton of fishing lines attached to the bobbers I think they are called. And the visual bug reaches quite far away if I'm honest, I'm pretty sure it's the entire client simulation distance. It doesn't seem to affect the performance of the farm so I'm just going to assume everything is alright, and future Batsy will have to deal with it. For now, what I'm trying to do is to filter out some of these things. At least to separate the junk that will be crushed from the rest. Oh look, there is literally a can be crushed tag, that's perfect. Ah, maybe not so perfect, even bone meal can be crushed too. I'm going to try set a filter as deny bone meal with the other filter inside as allow things that can be crushed. Yeah, that didn't work at all. I don't get why not though, it's set to only deny bone meal, will only allow things that can be crushed. What if I set it to allow things that can be crushed, then add a deny filter for bone meal specifically. And I put them together on the same allow filter. Never mind, it's just spitting everything. I thought I did similar filters in the past, but I honestly have no clue how are they meant to work. There is one option for the attribute filter that it requires to meet all requirements, but this option isn't on the regular filter. Half an hour later. I just ended up making a normal filter with the few items I want to move downwards. I would have sworn I did similar filters in the past, but I honestly completely forgot how are they meant to be set. If you have any idea about filters, I wouldn't mind some help on the comments. For now I will just be adding items manually. But that's enough setup for now. The experience tank is filling up nicely, although I still don't know how much experience levels each of those supposed buckets is. Once I make sure there are no issues with the farm, I will be expanding downwards. Maybe repeating the same farm a couple more times. The drops are slowly getting better. A bunch of jellyfish already, which is gonna be cooked into slime balls. Tin cans are pretty good for iron, and we saw how nice the treasure chests can be. There are a ton of squids too, which is going to be my source of ink from now on. All in all this is looking great. What I want to do now, is setting up the filters for the tool repairing setup. I need to wait for the fishing rods to run out of durability so I can set it up via damaged tags, but it shouldn't take too long, I hope. I have a doctor's appointment to attend today, so that's pretty much perfect, I will be leaving this here afk for a while, and ideally, by the time I'm back, I can set up those filters, and move into the next stage of the farm. Some hours later. This is taking a whole lot longer than I anticipated. The fishing rods are still at half durability, and I have been gone for several hours already. 
I think I'm going to get building the rest of the farm for now, and maybe tomorrow once the rods are done, I will set those up and do the rest of the finishing touches. So Batsy, cue the time lapse. It actually took two whole days for the fishing rods to run out of durability, but it's finally time to set them all up. So long as they have mending, the deployers will simply move around like that without using the actual tools. We can take one of these, and you can see how it's down to zero durability. Now I only need to set it to heavily damage, and that should remove them from the deployer whenever they get low. I can finally repair them all and they should go back to the deployers on their own. Alright, this is working perfectly. Now to do the same thing for every other segment of the farm. Oh my goodness me, the fishing lines are getting worse. The good news is that everything is working perfectly. The bad news is that I have 90 fishing lines attached to my body for some reason, and this is getting really cursed to look at. It's even more than the 90 fishing rods in place, each one of those bobbers seem to have two fishing lines coming from them. At least it's not covering the screen too much, but this is starting to get ridiculous. The experience is off the charts though. I'm not sure what 200 thousands mean, but that sounds like a lot of levels. I will have this running for a little bit, and when I see that everything is working as intended, I will start with the processing segment. Hopefully by then I have fixed this visual bug. This final segment has taken me countless hours of fixing things, changing stuff and constantly adding more machines into it. But I finally have a fully functional processing section, and I can't wait to show you all what I've done with it. Don't mind the fishing lines, I didn't have the time to fix those. The collecting system is now done with Tom's storage. I kinda forget until the last moment that for this season, I'm forcing myself to use Tom's and sophisticated storage more often. It reminded me the fact that the shoots were looking pretty bad so I ended up changing it for cables that I hope it makes it look more interesting once I build the walls. All of that moves the items down into this main funnel. I attached an observer into it so it takes the funnel to work slightly faster than by default. It's not a huge difference, but sometimes the funnel doesn't fully keep up with it, so that helps it be more stable. Then I have another cable going this way, where I'm extracting all of the bone fishes, fish bones, something like that. We will go back to that in a second. I have also added a second speed controller underneath. This allows me to run everything at max speed, which I actually had to do in order to keep up with the cods and salmon specifically. After the funnel, all of the items will be moved along the back belt and distributed to their specific sections to get processed. The same belt also has a buffer barrel, that also serves as an input point in case I want to dump things into the system. 
Up to this point, everything is done with toms or chutes, which means, there is no real good place to dump items into. That's why I kept the barrel here. The first section is what will be producing the bone meal. Which, I'm not sure if I explained this, but this entire project, this unholy fishing mess I have behind me. This actually started as a concept to farm bone meal passively. The first barrel will be picking up the random bones we sometimes get, while the second one will take both cods and salmons, plus some random bone meal that we can fish sometimes. The bones will move this way, to get processed with a millstone. That will give both bone meal and white dye as a side product. So the white dye continues forward to its own barrel, while the bone meal moves sideways to the next belt. The fish moves into a depot where it gets processed into bone meal, and it lands on the same belt that the millstone is dumping into. The fish also has a food side product that gets dumped into lava. The next section takes care of things that can be crushed, and other products with the same outputs. These are the four resulting materials I'm getting from all of those items. Some of them we also get directly from fishing. That's why there is a side funnel that extracts the sticks, leather and string. That will move along the side belt, which goes directly towards the barrel. While the main funnel will extract everything else to be processed. The first step is a ramp that moves the items towards the crushers. While the tin cans and rotten flesh get extracted before that point. These items will get smelted in here to make both leather and iron nuggets. The nuggets then move sideways with this funnel. While the leather ends up in the same depot where things get crushed into. Those materials get moved along the belt to get stored into the final barrel. While the nuggets get fed into a basin to produce ingots. It's a little bit hard to show, I ended up adding too many things to such small space. The next section will be processing the squid, where I'm also filtering the ink that we can sometimes get from fishing directly. It's the same setup as the fish from before, with a knife for the cutting board recipes. This also gives a bunch of food as a side product, which I'm also dumping into lava. This is my favorite one for sure, the water bottles. I added a drain in here so I can store empty bottles instead. The problem with the drain is that, the pump cannot extract the water, unless there is no water underneath the pump. When the pump extracts the water, it won't be able to extract any more. That's why the water source needs to be removed every time. The piston makes sure to always break it. When the bottle continues forward along the belt, it will trigger the observer underneath, which then will trigger the piston to remove said water. It's one of the most simple things I have done this entire month, but I love the simplicity of it. After that, I have a barrel for the jellyfish. This one is as simple as cooking it with lava. Then a basin to convert it into blocks for better storing. Towards the end I added a funnel to filter some of the plants from the sea, and I used the same barrel to also sort out the wood from aquaculture. The plants continue forward as normal, those will simply get stored. While the good gets processed into oak planks. And finally, for the last funnel, we have the little treasure boxes, and some random fish that I will show in a second. Boxes will move forward to be stored. While the fish comes here to get crafted into gold nuggets, and later on the ingots. Gold fishes are rare, but it's a nice side product to have every once in a while. It hasn't even been a day, and there is already a considerable amount of gold in here. In fact, most of the side products have pretty solid amounts already. Bottles I'm not even sure if I will ever use any of them, but look at the ink sacks for example. This is more than enough rates for the entire server. Stuff like the iron has blown my mind, I wasn't expecting this much. Sure, it's not the same as an actual iron farm, but this is a side product. Some of the other materials I'm not too sure I will ever use this much, or any at all, but I guess it's always good in case I ever need them. Finally, the bone blocks, the reason we are here. It's producing a crazy amount of bone meal. Which to be fair, 
given the size and cost of it, it's questionable how worth it this farm is. Most of the bone meal comes from the cutting board recipes. Those vanilla fishes are very common. It takes like... Not sure how many seconds, but it's a new block very often. I almost forgot, the knife here also gets repaired automatically. I also figured that in order for the deployers to not break the tool, they require to have mending on it. It's super important that there is mending in the tool, otherwise it will use it until it breaks. From the deployers, it gets sucked into this belt where it gets repaired, and sent back into place. I really love this build, it's super cool to see it working. I still have the weird fishing lines that I will try to fix before getting into the decorations, but other than that, the farm has exceeded my expectations, and it's honestly been a really fun process to get into. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to decorate it, but I want to make sure that some of the moving parts are still visible from the outside. I managed to fix the fishing lines, at least on my end anyway, I got someone else to place the rods for me, so they look glitched on their client instead. Not the best solution but it allows me to play normally for the time being. I was hoping to get the decorations done for this episode, but this ended up being quite a long project to tackle in just one week. I would say this though, this has been one of the best projects I have done in a while. I loved trying to figure out how things work, taking glitches and making them a feature, working out the logistics of all of the parts. It's been a blast, and it has given me an idea on how to make another one, but this time it will also farm all of the books and treasures from the sea, which I'm super excited to start with. I hope it was fun to watch the process I normally go through when making farms, and maybe it gave a bit of an insight on how I try to figure things out. For the next episode, I want to make a very little temporary shop so I can start selling some fish bones and tridents, I might start decorating this farm too if I have a couple of free hours to do so, but more importantly, I want to start on the next fishing farm, I'm super hyped to start researching to see if that one works. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see the humans in the next one. <laughs>